Hey there, so I've got a lot of Node.js videos coming up. Uh, I've already recorded some videos on how to do deployments with Node.js, automated deployments, fun stuff. But first I wanted to answer the question uh, with an introductory video of what is Node.js? I've had a lot of people ask me this. People are saying stuff like, hey, I've been doing PHP for a lot of years, uh, but I don't exactly get what Node.js is. Sounds confusing, seems like it means a lot of different things, and it kind of does to some people. So we're going to answer that. Uh, the simple question is, or the simple answer is, is the makers of Node.js took JavaScript, which is normally confined to a browser, and they allowed it to run on your computer. So normally, you know, JavaScript runs in the browser, it can only access your web page, uh, but when you allow it to run, when you give it a, an environment to run on the machine, they took Google Chrome's V8 engine, which is an awesome JavaScript engine, and now V8 runs on your machine. And so this whole new world opens up. Now you can access the files on your computer, which you normally can't do with JavaScript. You can listen to network traffic on your computer. You can listen to HTTP requests your machine gets and send back a file. You can access databases directly, all sorts of great stuff. Basically anything you could do with PHP or Ruby on Rails, you can now do with JavaScript in Node.js. And so there's basically two categories of what people are doing with Node. They're building utilities on the machine, which is like utilities for your day-in, day-out development. That would be Gulp, Grunt, Yeoman, you know, uh, you know, things that you'll concatenate and build JavaScript files with. Or it'll listen to file system changes and it'll do live reload. Or, you know, whenever you save a SAS file, it will automatically convert a CSS file. Utilities on your machine. If you say a job description... If you see a job description that says, you know, front-end developer, Node.js is in there somewhere, they're probably referring to this kind of Node.js. If you see a job description that says Node.js engineer, Node.js developer, they're probably talking to the other use case, which is let's build a web server, a web application with Node. Instead of using Ruby on Rails, PHP, Python, we're going to use Express framework for Node.js or COA framework for Node.js or whatever and we're going to build our web application in this and so that's kind of what the other use case is so let's do some super basics on how this Node.js thing works well for one if you go to Node.js.org you can install it on your machine then you can type Node-V there you go I've got a version I can actually just type Node right now and now I'm running a process a process you know like kind of a, a program that's running on your computer I've now created a new process. I can type JavaScript, very A equals one, and type A, A equals one, just like I would normally do on a console. But what's different about this is this process right here runs within window. So if I go var A equals one, then window.a equals one, because window is my global scope. There is no window object on a Node.js process because there's no window. Uh, what there is is a global object, global A equals 1. And then there's also no document object. Uh, JavaScript has a global document object, which is my HTML document that this thing's built upon. Well, this isn't tied to an HTML document. It's tied to a process, uh, which is the actual program process that's running right now. So I have a process object, and that's kind of two differences. I'm going to control C twice to get out of that. Uh, and you can also, I have my module one JS right here. You can also run node module one. Um, and I don't have to put JS, but I can. And so it runs this and exits because nothing's happening. So I can go console log hi. And then I can run that again. Hi. You now you can do var a equals one console log a. And then run that again, it says hi, it says one. So that's kind of how you'll actually execute files, just like you would execute PHP files or something like that on your machine. And how they, let's get into modules real quick, um, how modules work within Node, because this is going to apply either way. And I'm probably, I'm pretty much only going to get into modules, NPM, and a basic web server, and then we're done. And that's kind of going to give you the overall scope of how you program in Node.js. So in modules are how you basically load one file into another. If you've used required.js, you already get the concept. Let's go var2 uh, m2 equals require module2. So that's saying before I do any more code, I need to load in module2. So here's my module2. 
I actually have to do this, which means I'm looking for a file in the same directory. Or I could go, uh, you know, if there's other folders going on here, I could go folder to slash module to. It basically assumes .js is added, just like, you know, if you were running a file over here. So in this case, it's in the same directory. I'm just going to require .module2, and let's console log this, m2. Run it, and module2 is a function. Let's actually delete that. That's from earlier stuff that I was testing the video. Module2 is an empty object because module2 is not exporting anything at all. I can go var a equals 1, run it. Still nothing. I've defined var a in here, but I'm not exporting that. To get this from module 2 into module 1, it's whatever is exporting from module 2 is what will get passed into this m2 variable. So if I go module exports a equals a, so now I'm assigning a to module exports a. There you go. Now the value of a is 1. I can go module exports b equals 2. And now you see I'm just basically building a whole object. Uh, you can also shorthand this. You can just go exports. Exports A equals that. Same thing. Works just fine. Or you can override the entire module exports object and make it a function. So module 2. So now I can actually go M2 equals require module 2. And I can run M2 because it's a function now. So there you go. When I run function module 2, it's going to console log it. So that's kind of how modules work. Uh, that's kind of how your separation of files works in Node.js. And what they've also built is this Node Package Manager, which is NPM. It comes with Node. And that allows you to actually download um, and manage packages, which is really cool. So I can go NPM install underscore. It's pretty popular module. So now it made a node modules folder and it added underscore in there. And so now I can actually go there equals require underscore. No, no file path, no dot slash, just underscore. And so that's going to look in my node modules folder for the underscore module. And the underscore package will tell me what file that loads and that is by default just going to load underscore so now I can go uh, see a console log my underscore character and when I run module one you see that's the whole underscore library Awesome, super cool. So NPM is a super easy way of installing common things um, and then the other piece to NPM is ideally you want to save them in a package. If you're working on a project and you have 15 different node modules, you don't want to have you don't have to run NPM install every time somebody downloads your you know GitHub repository and needs these dependencies. You want to be able to save the 20 dependencies you have. So you'll actually run NPM init, and we're actually going to start an NPM package here real quick. Name, what is node? Sure, 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 sure. Um, and so I just said okay to everything, and it made a package JSON file for me. And so it's called what is node, has a version, blah, blah, blah. And you see it already added underscore as a dependency for me because I've already installed that. So now I can do npm install backbone. If I run npm install backbone, it added to my node modules as well, but it did not add to my package JSON because I didn't do the flash s or slash dash s flag. So now if I do dash s, that's for save. You can see that it now added backbone in here into my package JSON as well. Um, and so now I've got the two going on. Let's say I delete this node modules folder altogether. Bye bye, go away. You don't want to keep the node modules in. So now my, my whole node project consists of this one package JSON file. And all I have to do is go npm install. npm install is going to look through all the dependencies and it's going to get them all. There you go. Now I've got all my node modules and now everything's going to work. I can require underscore again. So that's kind of 
if that made sense, that's how NPM works. NPM allows you to maintain all your dependencies. One of the awesome things about Node is there's thousands and thousands of dependencies that people are building all the time that allow you to do cool things like uh, you know, access web services or log into Google with your Google email address. There's packages out there for all this stuff. So in Node, you can just load in a package real time. The package will do the dirty work for you, and you can focus on building your application. Let's look at the HTTP package, which is what we'll use to make a basic web server. We don't have to install this with NPM because it comes built into Node. HTTP and we can go HTTP create server and let's give that a function whoops now we'll go var server equals that returns a server and that server can listen to port 3002 normally you run node stuff on port 3000 actually so we'll do port 3000 makes this a little bigger here so now I'm going to create a web server and that web server will get request response and so whenever I get an incoming request on port 3000 this function will fire and I get to access what they're requesting and I get to actually make a little response so I'm gonna do is I'm going to console log got a request and I'm going to do response dot right hi and I'm going to response dot end There we go. And now let's run this. So you notice it runs and it keeps running. It doesn't stop because there is an open server running that's listening to any request on port 3000. So if I go to port 3000, it says hi. And it says, hey, I got a request. Let's do it again. Nice, got another request. It's sent back hi. If I keep doing this, it's going to keep saying, hey, I got a request. I got a request. Let's send hi back every time. Super cool. It's super awesome. And so that's kind of how you build a basic web server. Um, you could listen to, if I went localhost 3000 slash, give me a file, then it's still just going to say, hey, because there's no smart code in here listening to what the path is and what we're going to do with that path. And so, but we could listen to the path. And if the path is image.jpg, we could go get image.jpg and respond back with that. So that's kind of what Node.js is. From here on out, you get to mess around with it. If you want to learn how to build an express web app, then I have a video on that already. I'm going to put that video in the description. And that's an introduction to Node.js.